Fellas, do you lie on the internet for fun and profit? Me too! It's my favorite thing to do. And that's why we're doing another episode of Fact Your Opinion, where you send your most repugnant, repulsive, repudiatory opinions, and we're going to talk about, about them on the show, whether it's about video games or otherwise. Just, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the one to tell you whether it's a fact and it's true, or it's just your opinion and it doesn't actually hold any weight. Let's go ahead and get started. Boom! Charmingus. Uh-oh. <laughs> the Elden Ring debate. Spirit Ashes were put in Elden Ring to make the more casual audience stick with their game so it isn't deemed too hard. And playing without them is the true experience. Who cares? Elden Ring is Resident Sleeper. Okay, are you really going to be a contrarian? Come on, it's a good game. Even if you don't like it that much, it's a good game, right? Most people say an opinion. I'm going to pop it. You ready? Here is the thing. It's true up until here. You should have stopped it right there. Now you've gone too far, young man or lady. That's right. It is now an opinion. And you knew that. This is silly. I genuinely think that the Spirit Ashes were specifically put in the game to make it easier. There are so many things to stop you from failing. If you run into a boss, you can fuck around for eight hours and come back to him at double the level. But to say that fighting without them is the true experience is a little, uh, it's a little foolish. <laughs> I tried playing the game normally, and it felt like in Elden Ring more than any other game, they really want you to cheese the fuck out of it. Obviously, cheesing has always been a thing in the game. They kind of welcome that, but never like this game. The Radon boss fight in particular is, I think, Miyazaki sitting you down in a chair and saying, motherfucker, use that. That's why it's there. And prideful people be like, no, -uh, I could beat him on my own. You could, but it's mad hard. It feels like in this game more than anything else, Miyazaki, it just doesn't care how you beat it. And that's probably why it's so popular and why it's sold that many copies. Because whenever it's going to be an open world game, you have to allow people more chances and opportunities to progress forward rather than like, here's a wall of a boss that you can't get past. You have to slam your head against it forever. The first part is true. Spirit Ashes are definitely summons without making you feel bad. But it just, I, I feel like these are all in there to make it easier for a more casual, sort of wider audience, which is not a bad thing. Any people getting into the series that wouldn't be into it otherwise are great. I do worry for those poor folk who are going to uh, go back to the old games. <laughs> like if you play Elden Ring and then you try playing Dark Souls 3 or something, it's a little different. It is designed specifically for you to dick around and cheese it. And Miyazaki wants you to succeed, and he doesn't care how you do it. So the first part's real, second part is not. I don't- I'll- I'll use whatever I can to beat this stupid game. Dumbass game, it's an opinion. PENIS MAN! <laughs> Modern day fan petitions rarely accomplish anything, and exist to regurgitate the same opinions over and over. When they actually do work, like in the Snyder Cut, Sonic's movie redesign, it invites even more insufferable people to make their own benign petitions for anything. This guy sounds like he's trying to silence you. Don't you want a say in how corporations conduct business? Looks like most people are saying this is true. Uh, and you know, it's, um, I would be inclined to agree. There's a lot of people that have come to the conclusion, maybe a little tinfoil hat, that Sonic was supposed to be bad to drum up interest. And normally I would think that was bullshit, but the Sonic team seems kind of savvy. So now I'm kind of like, eh, I just think sometimes stuff should be shitty and you should not care about it so much. In the case of the Sonic movie, I guess they kind of saved it because obviously if that movie bombed, they weren't going to get another one. And for Snyder, it's like people just really, really love Zack Snyder. It's weird to me because it feels like the purpose of a petition in a lot of ways isn't even to actually enact any sort of change. It's just to create noise and to say that you did it six months later when the movie isn't good. Fandoms are weird and annoying. I got a lot of questions about fandoms or a lot of opinions about fandoms and I don't, I don't care enough to respond. 
Name a fandom that isn't weird and annoying. Well, as soon as you call yourself a fandom, I'm like, uh, eh. <laughs> it's okay to like something, but once you, uh, like, ascribe to it, regardless, this is probably true, but I also feel like if it gets stuff done, I think we're past that era. I think corporations don't really have to even pretend to care what, what you think anymore. <laughs> LD. All Italian food is the same goddamn thing. They tend to have all the same ingredients with the only difference being the order in which they're prepared. All Italian food is the same. All of it. Damn. 72% say opinion? Guys, I, uh, no, that's true. <laughs> Where are you eating? Cody, you are a massive goof. What are you talking about? It's tomatoes and pasta and meat and cheese. Now, to be fair, let's be fair here. Most cultures are like this. Mexican food is like a burrito is just a taco, but in a tortilla. Enchiladas are just tiny burritos with sauce on them. Is this not true? False? That's Tex-Mex. Oh, I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> Your America is showing. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I've never been to Mexico. I've never been to Italy. So... Coney Olive Garden is not indicative of other people's cuisine. Okay, I j maybe, maybe him and I, maybe LD and I have spent too much time at the food court. All I know is that I, whenever I look at Mexican food, or Italian food is the same thing, just prepared in different Literally ways. Literally not even con is doing things like no, pastries no, 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 and deserts. No, 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 you hear no, no, Italian no, no, food and all no, 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 you can no, no, think no, no, of no, is no, spaghetti no, no, and meatballs. No, 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 no. We're not talking about desserts. If we talk about desserts and, and pastries, then that blows this shit wide the fuck open. I'm talking about entrees here. And Italian entrees, in my experience, is pasta or some form of dish, whether it's like a lasagna, which is a long flat pasta, or a spaghetti, which is a long tube pasta. Pizza literally exists, which is bread and cheese and meat and sauce. What name an Italian food, please? I would like to learn. I'm I'm here, I'm learning just as much as you are. Italian wedding soup. Okay, are we opening up? Okay, you know what? If we open this up, if we open this up to desserts and, and pastries and soups and drinks, we're talking about entrees here. You're digging a deeper hole. What are you talking about? Oh, look at this. But ice cream risotto, that's rice. Fine. Pizza. Bread, sauce, cheese. And probably meat. Pasta. Bread, sauce, probably cheese. Lasagna. Bread, sauce, cheese. Gelato. That's ice cream. You can't claim ice cream. Uh, <laughs> bread and cheese. Pizza dough filled with mozzarella and tomato. That's literally <laughs> dough, cheese, and tomato. Bread sauce, cheese. Florentina, that's steak. I'll give you steak. Fancy steak. Frito misto pie. This, they made this up. Okay, I'm not eating that. Tiramisu. Uh, you know what? I'll give you tiramisu. I know it's a dessert. I'm going to let you have this one because this one's famous. And that's it. If I pay you $10, will you agree it's an opinion and not a fact? The expert Italian has wrote in. Well, you got to pay me an additional $10. 10 more dollars, as you said. Now Ofi it is officially an opinion, right? Officially. Coney that's Shea. true. I've been bought out by the Italian government. Congre Thank you, Italy, for your generous contribution. The lobbyists have won. It's not true. Thank you, Italy. God bless. Now, I saw a lot of these because this was a conversation soon, uh, recently that Max brought up. A free-to-play fighting game would not work since the vast majority of people who pick up a fighting game just drop it after a few weeks or end up just playing casually. Most people don't want to take fighting games seriously and free-to-play model relies on players coming back every day. This is... Uh, okay, I'm going to show my hand a little bit here. I actually... I don't know on this one. This was another thing I wanted to discuss because I think this is an interesting topic. My personal thought, this is Cope. I think a free-to-play fighting game could work. That said, I don't know if you want to make it work. Because if it's gonna work, it has to be made so well. It has to be such a good fucking game that you have to be okay with putting it out there and maybe it, it bombs. Maybe nobody plays it, nobody cares. And I don't know if you'll ever see that. Obviously, you could say stuff like Brawlhalla is popping off. 
Uh, Multiverses is trying to do the same thing, even though those aren't really fighting games. It's like Platform Fighter, which is a different thing. Killer Instinct, a lot of people point to, but didn't that, wasn't that, that was not free to play when it came out though, right? It was free to play when it came out? It's a weird case, really. I thought it cost money when it came out. Oh, it was an Xbox One exclusive. Okay, well, what the fuck? <laughs> are we not gonna, are we not gonna give that information? Not gonna offer me that information right there, huh? The season pass was 20. Well, that's not the same though. That's still free to play. Even if the season pass costs more, because the idea is you play it and then you decide if you want the season pass, right? I think you could get a free to play fighting game to work, but it would require an insane amount of money and talent and polish. And I think the only people that can make it work ironically are Riot, because they have existing IPs they can dump into it. That'll get people excited. I think Project L absolutely will do it. Isn't it interesting, though, that they have to use existing IPs with Project L rather than going the Valorant route? They could just make new stuff, but they don't. Maybe fighting games aren't as ubiquitous as people say. This guy's statement also seems like they think a casual fighting game isn't good. Depends on what you want, I guess. Like, Brawlhalla is the most extreme version of that, where obviously there's depth, but the idea is it's supposed to be played casually, which is, I guess, the itch that platform fighters scratch. I think free-to-play benefits fighting games in that you cast a wider net at the beginning, because everybody can give it a try. But at the end of the day, it has to be really good. Same thing that we just talked about with Riot, is you have to make a game that is good enough to keep people hooked. DLC? DLC alone won't sell people on it if they don't like the game from the beginning. If they like the characters like Mortal Kombat or DBFZ, it will sell copies. Isn't it weird how it comes down to characters in fighting games? Like, you want to be Sub-Zero. You want to be uh, Mario. You want to be Ryu. Instead of just like a random guy who you just see for the first time. I don't know what we came up with on this. I think this is an opinion. Because I do think it can be done. But I see what they're saying. And this is really the conversation that we're going to have forever and ever until Project L comes out. And then people realize that it's possible. So, boom! Haas! DLC and fighting games. Oh my god, this is all connected. DLC characters in fighting games shouldn't cost more than a dollar. If a fighting game wants to make money, it should be off of costumes and skins more than characters. All right, I'm cutting this one off first. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this one quick. Poor alert! Poor person alert! One dollar, Haas? One dollar? You can't afford five of those? Do you know how hard it is to come up with a new character, to rig it up, to animate it, to get sounds, to get a voice actor? Are you kidding me? One dollar? Are you telling me you want a one dollar character with twenty dollar costumes? No. I want to pay six dollars for the character. Maybe ten. I'll pay ten bucks for a character. That's a whole new system. That's new functions. Costumes should be a dollar. Yes! Dude, the fucking fact that Smash will sell you costumes for 75 cents is magic. You could buy me hats for 75 cents. Not even a dollar. That's insane. Smash has my favorite monetization system and they do nothing with it. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah, I don't I don't even know how to entertain this fact. I'm sorry, not fact, this opinion. You can't scrape together more than 100 pennies for a new character. That's insane to me. Especially because new characters are usually what keep the game going. Once a game stops releasing characters, it's kind of flatlining. That's what gets people sort of out of it. No, I can't believe it. One dollar? What are you doing? <laughs> Yogurt is a disgusting ass food and you should feel disgusting eating it. The smell and the texture combined is just repugnant as hell. Damn, a lot of yogurt heads here in the chat. Unfortunately, Al6 is spitting. All of you guys are fucked in the head. Do you know what yogurt is? It's literally bacteria. You're eating tiny bugs. It is a culture of bacteria that you are eating that got that is supposed to taste like peach or vanilla or whatever it is. Probiotic bacteria. I don't care what kind of bacteria it is. I'm not eating bugs. You have bacteria in your stomach right now. Yeah, but I can't change that. Why would I introduce more? Okay, I'm going to come clean with you guys. This might be a personal thing. Ever since I found out that yogurt was just a bacterial culture, I can't eat it. I know, I eat cheese. I eat milk. I'm showing you a moment of weakness. I do all of that, but I can't eat yogurt. Cause it's all slimy and it's like, it's so gross, man. Everything is bacteria. But not when you cook it. I made burgers tonight. I had ground beef and I cooked it on the grill and I cooked it for so long and it was so hot that all the bugs died. And then I can eat it. 
Right? Right? Please tell me I'm right. Bacteria is not bugs. It literally is. They're single cell bugs. How do I put this? Parts of a bug, the shell, the parts of a bug are not the bug in entirety. Yogurt is just bacteria, but the other parts are pieces of things. Not the bug itself, but maybe bits of it. I want you to know none of this is a bait. <laughs> I, I'm really not joking. You're so full of shit. I'm not kidding. Coney, I don't like yogurt, but this is a horrendous steak. Listen, okay, like I said, I'm showing you- <laughs> A lot of people are donating. Coney, there are bacteria on your face But right I can't now. stop Having that! Sex, pooping and dying I can't on do- your face, well, maybe on your and face. And you have to live with that. I- I j I can't do anything about the bacteria on my face or hands or body. I can't do anything about that. But I could choose not to ingest more. What about bread? Bread's great. Yeast doesn't count. Again, you're cooking yeast. The bugs die when they get hot. I don't drink beer. Nope, no beer. None of that. I'm telling you, none of this is a bait. I know how stupid it is. I know how dumb it is. That's why I won't eat potatoes either. You guys know those come from the ground, right? Ugh. That one was a bait. <laughs> that one isn't true. That one's not true. Cody has gotten stunlocked on every entry tonight. You know what? I would like to say we've had some good discussions. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say that? Please say that in the comments below. I think we've had some great discussions. Can I get a Coney shake? Huh? Pop a shake if you've learned something in this stream. You guys can't see the chat on YouTube, but they're all agreeing. Listen, I, I get it on the yogurt thing. I really do. I don't know what to tell you. That's just... It's gross, man. Last one! If Mario Strikers turns out bad, all Nintendo sports games should be considered dead and buried. They'll never make a good one again. If it's bad, lock it up. Damn, that's a lot of facts. There are a lot of sports games that came out. You guys hate them all? This one is, I think, not true, but not for the reason that you think. I liked tennis and golf, but they did feel kind of empty, and I didn't want to keep, like, I played them for, like, a month. I don't know if the games themselves are bad, or if we just live in a world that is so much more disposable. There's so many games now that you kind of eat through one and then you just throw it out. Mario Strikers is a different dev too, because they have next level games, who I love. I fucking love those guys. But that's the thing is these are all different devs too, because what, Camelot makes tennis, right? They make golf too. Yeah, and people have said that tennis and golf feel kind of empty, that there isn't much to do. But again, I don't know if the games themselves are the problem, or if it's just a difference in the seat in the culture mario tennis aces is hot garbage it's not though it's good and it's fun mario sports game don't have heart no so i agree with Strikers that charged was the last mario sports game that felt like the devs put every ounce of blood and sweat into it i mean strikers charge is one of my favorite games ever made but also does that keep you playing the game if the game has heart and soul and passion does that keep you playing it or is the game just really fun Obviously, the polish and the presentation of the game is a big deal of it, but if that game was offline and you finished all the cups, would you keep playing it? I don't feel like people would. I feel like you need a consistent... Like, the online is what carried that game because the online was amazing and the gameplay was insane. The game has to be fun, first and foremost. And I think the tennis and the golf games were fun, which is why I'm saying I don't know why... I don't really know if Strikers, like, even if it is good, are people going to keep playing it? I don't know. It feels like games are so disposable now. My point is that these games, when I play them, the Mario sports games, they're good, and I enjoy them, and I like them. But I always put them back on the shelf, and I never play them again. One, because nobody else is going to keep playing online except for Try Hard Sweats, who I don't want to play against regularly. Two, because there's just not that much else to do. And that doesn't mean the game is bad. It just means it doesn't have a lot. How do you have a game that has a lot good online? That's really it. Why does everybody like Mario Kart? Because you play online with people. Strikers might just be amazing, but if they don't have content to continue keep people playing, then even if it is good deep down, but there's nothing beyond just the initial campaign or whatever, that doesn't mean it was bad. It just means they didn't add enough stuff. And also, the fact that these are all being made by different teams makes me think that, you know, 
Maybe they didn't apply themselves. But all this won't matter because Next Level Games is going to make it good. And that's why it's an opinion. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Factor Opinion. Did you agree? Did you disagree? I have no idea what's going to make it in the video or not. We had a pretty charged night uh, in terms of responses and things we talked about. So let me know what your favorite part is below. I'll definitely read it. If you like the video, be sure to drop a like. It really helps us out and it'll make you feel better. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Subscribe. Bye. Bye. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Got a little aggressive on that one. Okay. Everybody said bye, right?